Hi everybody welcome to live blogger in this video we will start designing this audio player so here we can see we have this waveform displayed over here and we also have these buttons to control the audio and if I click on this play button we can see that the audio plays and if I click on the pause button it stops and if I click on the stop button it goes back to time zero and uh, we can go to any of these positions and uh, just start playing and we also have the option of controlling the volume over here and if I click on this volume button it mutes and uh, now we cannot hear anything and if I click on this button once again we can see that it goes back to volume 50 so this is what we're going to design in this video and uh, in the next video I'll show you how to add the functionality of all these buttons now we're going to use a library called wavesurfer.js for this this library helps us create a waveform visualization so here we can see we have this waveform displayed over here because of this library. So let's get started. Alright, I just opened this folder called audio in VS Code. And in that I have a folder called audio where we have the audio that we're going to use in our audio player. So let's start by creating our necessary files. So let's create a new file and we'll just name it index.html. Now let's create a file for the CSS, so let's name it style.css and one more file for the JavaScript, so I'll just name it main.js. Let's start with the index.html file and in VS Code you can just type exclamation and press tab and you'll have this basic HTML5 code. And let's link our CSS file over here and we'll also link our JavaScript file over here, so I'll just type script colon src and here I'll just type main.js. Right now for the icons of the buttons, we're going to be using font awesome. So let's get the CDN of Font Awesome. So just Google for Font Awesome 5 CDN and you'll have this link of cdnjs.com. And let's copy this all.min.css from here. Let's click on this button. And let's go back to our HTML and I'll just paste it over here in the head section. All right, now let's start with the markup of our audio player. And I'll just open this in a browser. So I have this extension called Live Server installed on VS Code. So you can just search for Live Server over here and just install this extension. And once you install the extension, just right click over here in the HTML and just click on Open with Live Server. And we can see that our web page is opened over here. So let's start by writing the HTML for the audio player. Let's create a container division and we'll just give it a class of Audio Container. And in that we'll create a division with a class of Track Name for the name of the track. And I'll just type something over here. I'll just type the name of the track. All right, the next thing we need to have is the actual audio. So let's create a division with the class of audio. And we don't need to add anything over here. We can add the audio using JavaScript. All right now let's create the buttons. So let's create a division with the class of buttons. And in that we'll have all the buttons. So let's create a span and we'll just give it a class of play button. Now in the play button, we need to have two icons one for play and one for pause. So let's add both the icons over here. All right, so here I'm in fontawesome.com and let's go over here to icons and let's search for play. And let's click on this icon. And this is the code we need to copy. So let's click on this and let's paste it over here. So this is the code for the play icon. Let's copy this and paste it down for the pause button. Now for this icon, we just need to change this to pause. And if you go back to our website, we can see that we have the play and the pause buttons. All right, now let's create the stop button. So let's create a span and we'll just give it a class of stop btn. And I think for the stop button, we just need to change pause to stop. So let's paste it over here and let's change this to stop. And we have the stop icon. Now the next button we need to create is the volume button. So let's create a span and we'll just give it a class of mute btn because we're going to be using this as the mute button also. And here we need to have two icons, one for the mute icon and one for the full volume icon. So let's go to font awesome and let's search for volume. So here I'll just type volume. And this is the icon and we can see that here volume up. This is the code. So let's copy and paste uh, the icon over here and I'll just replace play with volume up. And let's duplicate it and uh, let's change this to volume mute. And here we can see all the icons are displayed. Alright, now the last thing we need to create is the volume slider. 
so let's create an input and uh, we'll just give it a type of range and here we can see we have the slider and we'll also add some more options over here so let's add a minimum value of 0 and let's add a maximum value of 1 and uh, let's set the step to 0 0.1 so whenever we move to the right or to the left we will have 0 0.1 step and by default we will have the value set to 0 0.5 and let's also add a class and we'll just give it a class of volume slider right now for each of these buttons we'll also have a class called btn so that we can style all of them similarly so I'll just type btn over here and even over here we will have btn alright I think that's it with the HTML so let's go over here to style.css and let's start styling this so first of all let's target the audio container so I'll just type dot audio container and we'll give it a width of 600 pixels now let's add a box shadow and we'll set the values to 0, 4 pixels, 8 pixels, negative 4 pixels, RGBA, 0, 0, 0 and 0 0.3. Right now let's set the font family to Roboto. And now let's style the audio inside the audio container. So here we can see inside this audio container division we have this division with a class of audio. So let's target this. So I'll just type audio container audio and I'll just set a background color of dark gray and we'll set the width to 100% of the parent and a height of 130 pixels alright now let's style this title of the track so for that we have given a class called track name so let's target that over here so here I'll just type audio container and here we'll just type track name now we're going to set the position of the track name relative to the audio container division. So here for the audio container division, I'll just type position relative. And here we can type position absolute. And then we can add the positioning. So I'll just type top position to 8 pixels and left position to 8 pixels. And we'll also set the color of the text to white. And we'll set the background color to some RGBA value so I'll just type RGBA 0 0 0 and 0 0.7 and let's add some padding so let's set a padding of 8 pixels top and bottom and 32 pixels left and right and let's set a border radius of 10 pixels and we'll set the font size to 13 pixels and we'll also add border radius to the audio container so let's copy this and uh, let's paste it over here and right now the border radius is not applied to the audio class so here we have to type overflow hidden now everything that goes outside this audio container will be hidden so now we have the border radius All right now let's style these buttons so let's scroll down and uh, for the buttons we have a container division called buttons and in that we have these spans with class btn so for all these buttons we have this class btn so let's target that so here I'll just type audio container btn and we'll just set a padding of 16 pixels and uh, we will set a width of 24 pixels and uh, we will set a margin right of 8 pixels and let's set the cursor to pointer so when you hover over this we have this pointer and right now the padding is not being applied over here because uh, these buttons are spans so by default spans have display of inline so we have to set the display to inline block and now we can see that we have the padding applied and let's also increase the width of this volume slider so let's type audio container volume slider and let's set the width to 200 pixels alright now we don't want to display both these icons at once so if you go over here to the HTML we can see that for these icons we have these classes now for the play icon we have this class called fa-play and for the pause icon we have this class called fa-pause so let's hide this pause icon from here so let's go over here to style.css and let's type audio container buttons and I'll just type play btn because that's the class name of the parent and in that we have the pause icon so let's type fa-pause and I'll just type display of none 
and we will do the same with this mute button over here so let's type audio container buttons and here we'll just type mute btn and here I'll just type fa dash volume mute because that's the class that we have over here for the mute icon so let's set the display to none right now everything looks all right all right now let's add the waveform over here so let's go over here to wavesurfer dash js dot org and here on the home page we have some quick start guide so first of all let's copy this script tag from here and let's paste it inside our html so here in the html i'll just go over here to the bottom and here just before the script tag of the main js i'll just paste it over here and the next thing is that we need to create a division or an id with some name and we have to add that over here in this instance of wave surfer so let's copy this code from here and let's go over here to our main.js file and I'll just paste it over here. And here instead of waveform, we have to add the class name that we had given for the audio. Here we can see for the audio, we have given a class of audio. So let's add that over here. So I'll just remove this and I'll just type dot audio. And here we have the wave color and the progress color. So let's change these. For the wave color, I'll just type light gray. And for the progress bar, I'll just type red. And we can also set other values over here. For example, I'll just set bar width. So this bar width is the width of each of these bars. So let's set the width to two. And then we need to have this line of code, which loads the audio file. So let's copy this and paste it over here. Now here, instead of wave surfer, you can also add your own name. So I'll just add audio track over here. And I'll just paste it over here. And let's add the link of our audio. So if you go back to our file browser, here we can see we have the audio folder and in that we have track1.mp3. So let's type dot dot forward slash audio forward slash track1.mp3. And here we can see the waveform is being displayed over here and we also have the color of the progress set to red. And we can see that everything looks all right. So that's it with the design of our audio player. Now in the next video, I'll show you how to add functionality to these buttons and we'll be using JavaScript for that. And we'll also use some functions from this wave surfer library. So that's it for this video. If you have any doubts, you can ask in the comments below. And if you like this video, please click on the like button and subscribe to this channel to get the latest video updates. Thanks a lot for watching. Have a nice day.